Argentina is an enormous land, the eighth largest country on earth, stretching from the tropics in the far north to the solitary emptiness of Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego in the far south. It covers a bit more area than the entire east and west coasts of the United States, with Texas thrown in for good measure. And the appealing thing for me is that it seems like there was people grilling in every backyard and street corner in that whole country, and that was the truth. So me and outside John packed up our bags, we rented a car, and we had ourselves a good time down there. And hopefully this video will help you out and teach you how to grill like a gaucho. Now, if there's one thing that I have to associate with Argentine cuisine, it would be cooking with fire. And I'm not talking about cooking with carbon, with charcoal, and I'm sure as heck not talking about cooking with the Traeger. No offense, of course. They cook down there over wood fire. You know, we're talking about splitting logs and everything, lighting your little teepee up and taking it from there. In the words of famed chef and personality Francis Mollman, Fire has its own language, spoken in the realm of heat, hunger, and desire. It speaks of alchemy, mystery, and above all, possibility. The ever-present beast within my soul. It is beyond words, beyond memory. It comes from a time long before I can recall. Now, I would hate to paraphrase this great man, but I think what he's trying to say is that cooking over wood fire is not as easy as it looks. Well, stay tuned to this video and I'm gonna help you out with identifying the two things that you need to purchase to make the job a little bit more manageable. Stay tuned, like, share, and subscribe. Folks, I would like to make one thing crystal clear before we start this video. And first, it's that yes. Mi club is San Lorenzo, okay? And if you don't like that, well, you can sound off in the comments. But more importantly, there's a lot of ways to cook with fire in Argentina. There's La Parrisha, there's the Orno de Barro, there's the Iron Cross. But they all revolve around a concept that I like to call coal control. So that's what we're going to be talking to, about today. And I'm going to show you a couple products that are going to help you, even if you're living in the U.S. or Europe or wherever you're coming from. Um, and if you hang tight until the end, we're going to be talking about another method of cooking that I guarantee you're only going to see in Argentina. So hang tight, like, share, subscribe, and enjoy. Now let's say you take your fly rod out one morning and despite the presence of an absolutely idiotic sheepdog, you manage to land yourself a nice padded game and trout and you want to cook that puppy up. Or say you find some chicken too and then hey maybe uh, your buddies bring by some beef ribs and all of a sudden you got yourself a good old old-fashioned Argentine cookout. Well First thing you're going to need to do is accumulate yourself a pretty decent chunk of firewood. Now, it all doesn't have to be perfect, but eventually you're going to be wanting to burn some heavy, hard fruit wood if you have the ability to do so. Now, the next question is, what do you do with all this burning wood? How do you translate that to delicious seared meat that isn't licked by flame and turned black by burning grease? Now, here's where I introduce you to the Argentine Brasero. In English, it's brasier. I think that's how it's pronounced. Brazier, hosier, I don't know. But you'll see them sometimes in wood fireplaces in the United States. Essentially what it does is you put your wood up there and it gives you some airflow underneath, gets the wood off of the ground. Uh, but for grilling purposes, the beauty of this tool is that it drops out perfectly sized coals that are done burning, still nice and hot, and you can just shovel those out from under your brazier, brasier, bracero, bra hosier, and put them under your asado, your uh, meat, wherever you want to put it. It gives you perfect sized little chunks of coal. And that way you're not dealing with huge open grease fires all the time. You're not dealing with a, a full burning stick. It's essentially replicating charcoal sized pieces, but at a more leisurely pace. So you can go all night long. You know, despite what some of you have been told, I've never considered myself to be a, a big corporate shill or a huckster or what have you. Some of these things have been hurled my way and, and that doesn't bother me because I get it. You know, I, I have that vibe. Used car salesperson in the last life, I think. 
Um, but I do have a product to recommend to you today. After a lot of research, I found a fantastic Parisha uh, beginner package on Amazon.com. I know, shill, I get it, shill. But what it does is it allows you to get into this style of cooking for under $300. It's all cast iron, made in the United States. So what we have here, you get the asado, the Parisha, the grill grate. You get the bracero, which gives you that cold control. It also gives you a chapa, which is essentially a, a rectangular cast iron skillet with a rim around it so you can do potatoes, bread, what have you. Um, then it also gives you tongs and a grill scraper. So for my money, again, under $300, all cast iron, American made. That's the best starter package you're going to be able to find. And it is on Prime Video. So uh, good luck finding something better than that. I did a lot of research online and there are some kind of boutique uh, shops that do equipment like this as well that I would support um, as well. But for a starter package for that price, I got to stick with the Amazon on here. So follow the link below down there in the bio. Uh, that's going to get you right to the product. And you'll, you'll see, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. it it's rugged. It's American made and it's built to last. So again, thanks for watching the video and I hope you learned something today. Él es el cocinero, no él. No él. <laughs>